Welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Photoshop CC from start to finish. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be creating this image right here. And the reason we're going to be making this example image is because it will allow you to explore all of the core concepts of Photoshop. So you're going to be able to learn how to manipulate images as well as create graphics. So all the way from blurring this background to removing the background of this person to adding text and shapes and everything in between. Now I know Photoshop is also pretty expensive. So if you don't have Photoshop yet, I'll also link a trial so that you can actually try it out and see if it's something that you actually want to use. And with that being said, let's get started. So when you open up Photoshop for the first time, you're going to be greeted with this page. And this is basically where you can open up recent files and create new ones. So we're just going to click on create new. And here we're going to find all of these settings for our new image. So I'm just going to name this file thumbnail. And then here you can set the dimensions. So I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080. And then you can set the resolution. If you're creating something that's high resolution, you can make it 300 pixels per inch. And then you can choose the color settings as well as the background contents. So we're just going to make the background transparent and then click on create. So once you create your file, you're going to be taken to the workspace. And as you can see, there is a lot going on, but the first thing we have to make sure is that our workspace is properly set up so that we're on the same page. So all you wanna do is go on window and then workspace and then click on reset essentials and it's going to take you to the essentials workspace. And we're just going to close this learn tab because <laughs> I'm here to teach you, you guys don't need that learn tab. And we're gonna quickly just go over all of the different features. Now, the first thing we're just going to do is create a shape. So on the left side here, these are where majority of your tools are. This is where you're going to be able to create different elements as well as select elements that you want to edit. And then you're going to be able to make adjustments to them up here, as well as on the right side as well, where you're going to be able to manipulate the layers. And then if we just create a rectangle, for example, you can see that right underneath this toolbar, you have a secondary bar, and here you can adjust the properties of whatever you're creating. So the first thing we're going to be doing is making a shape, which was the outline of the previous image. So to select any of these tools, all you have to do is click on them. And if you hold down, you can see that each of these tools also has sub tools. So we're just going to use the rectangle tool, and you can see that there's also a letter which indicates the shortcut of that tool. So I'm just going to click on the rectangle tool, and we're going to create a rectangle that is the same size of the canvas. As you can see, things are going to lock into place and then we're going to let go and it's going to create our shape. Now, if I wanted to move this rectangle around, I could click on the move tool and it would just let me move it around like so. And I could also use the rectangle marquee tool to select the rectangle and then I could move around the entire rectangle like so. Now, I like where the rectangle is, but if I didn't like the exact positioning of it, I could also press Control T, which basically selects the layer and whatever is encompassing it. And you can see this blue outline has come up. Now what I can do is I can actually drag on any of these anchor points to change the size, or I can move it around like so. Now when you're dragging something by default, it actually drags it in proportion. But if you hold Shift, you can see that I can actually drag it and it's not going to hold its proportions. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to drag this so that it covers the entire uh, canvas. And then I'm going to press on the check mark. Now, if I wanted to edit this rectangle in terms of its properties, all I have to do is make sure I'm on the rectangle layer. And then I click on the rectangle tool. And as you can see, it automatically selected the rectangle and the properties are up here. So what I can do is I can change the fill. And so we're going to just click on this white line or this white box with the red line. And this basically means I don't want any fill. And then we're going to go to the stroke and we're going to select the blue stroke. And you can also choose any color by clicking on this gradient over here and you can select any sort of color you want. Now this is going to be the outline of the thumbnails. So we're going to select this light blue. We're going to click okay. And then I'm going to change the width to about 12 PX. And that looks good to me. Now we've already covered a lot but a couple other things to keep in mind when you're creating shapes is that you can also press Control R or Command R on Mac. And you can also create rulers if you wanted to create shapes within your canvas and you wanted them to line up perfectly. So you can just drag a ruler by dragging out from wherever you're creating your ruler from. And then if you wanna remove this ruler, you just press Control and then you drag it out and it will disappear. 
Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a background. We're going to be blurring the background as well as using layers to make sure everything is set up correctly. So to add another image to your file, you just have to place it. So all you want to do is go to file and then you want to go to place embedded. And then we're going to go to downloads and I'm going to just download this image that I found from Unsplash. Now, as you can see, this image right now does not fit the canvas perfectly. So we're just going to drag it and not hold anything else because we want to keep the proportions. And then we're going to click on the checkbox. Now, as you can see, our border has gone away. And that's because when we look at the layers on the bottom right, the layers show that the background image is on top of our border. So to move a layer, all you have to do is just drag it. And you can also click on a, you can also double click on a layer and then you can type out a name for that layer if you want to name it. And there's also a couple other important layer settings. So some other things you can do with layers that are very important is you can obviously change the opacity and down here you can add a bunch of different layer effects. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on this lock button and this is going to lock the border layer. So if I go to the move tool, I'm not going to accidentally move the outline because I know this outline needs to stay here and now it's locked into place. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some changes to this background image. So the first thing you have to do is make sure you have the right layer selected by clicking on it. And then we're going to go to filter. And here you can see there's a lot of filters you can add to your image. So we're just going to be going to blur and then we're going to add a Gaussian blur. And we're going to be making it six pixels and we're going to click okay. And as you can see, it's going to blur our background. And of course up here, there's also a bunch of other effects we could add. So we could add a bunch of other kinds of filters. We could sharpen it if the image was too blurry, but we're, we're trying to make it blurry. So we're going to keep it as it is, but you can obviously explore and find other filters. Now this looks pretty good for our background. I think the next step is to add a person over here. So I'm going to go back to file place embedded, and then I'm going to add the image of the woman. Now, as you can see, there is a background, but we're going to be removing that later on. And we're just going to drag this over here and we're going to drag it out to make the image larger. And we're going to put it right over here and we're going to click on the check mark. Now, in order to remove the background, we have to make sure this is a flat image. So we're going to right click on the image to open up the properties of that image and some settings we can actually adjust. And we're going to click on rasterize layer and it's going to basically make the image flat so we can use the other Photoshop tools to remove the background. Now there's two ways we can remove the background. The easiest way usually is to use the magic wand tool. So if we just click over here and hold down, it'll come up. And if we click on it, it'll select certain components of the image that it believes are homogeneous. So what we see is if we use the magic wand tool and we select the background, it's also counting this part of the shirt as the background. And it's essentially thinking that the part of the arm over here is pretty bright. And so it's bleeding all the way into here and selecting as well. So if we clicked on delete, it would delete all of it, which is not what we want. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a different tool right above it called the magnetic lasso tool. And we're going to use the magnetic lasso tool to highlight around this part of the arm and then delete the background over here because this is the issue that's making it bleed into here. Once we remove this part of the background, the rest of the background is going to be able to, you know, be deleted with one single click. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure we have the magnetic lasso tool selected. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press control plus or command plus on Mac to zoom in. And you can also find the zoom down here. And we're just going to move over here and start using this tool. So to use a magnetic lasso tool, all you have to do is click and just let go and then drag. And if you want to create more points, you can click, keep clicking. And basically it'll kind of like a magnet go around this girl's arm. And if it's not doing that, we can click to add our own points. But right now it's doing a really good job of automatically adding these points. So here it kind of messed up. We're just going to create our own points by clicking like so, and then it should be good from here. And this was basically the issue. It was this entire part of the arm, right? So once we have this part of the arm selected, we can kind of just close off this shape by clicking like so. And now it's going to select it and we can click on delete and it's going to delete that part of the background. And then we can press control D. Now, if I press control plus and zoom in, we can see we missed some of the background, which is fine because we can also use the eraser tool. So if we click on the eraser tool, we can see the eraser properties come up over here. 
and we're just going to make the hardness 100 and change the size. So now the size is 6% and we can just click over here to erase the remainder of the white background and kind of just smooth it out. Now this isn't a perfect job, but I'm just trying to show you how these tools can work together to you know, get you the desired results you want. So we have this part of the arm removed now and we can go back into the magic wand tool and we can select it. And then if we click delete, everything else gets removed without a problem and same with down here and boom, boom, there we go. And if we press control or command D, it'll deselect whatever is being selected and we have the background removed. Now, while we're going through these tools, there's a few more things I'm going to cover quickly. The first one is the crop tool. So if you click on the crop tool, you can actually just change the size of the entire file like so. So if you were repurposing something for social media, that's a good you know use case. We also have the eyedropper tool. So if we click on the eyedropper tool, it'll basically allow us to select certain colors. So if I click on the blue, for example, it sets the color down here to blue. And if I was to create a new shape now, it would be the same color as the eyedropper tool. And then right underneath that, we have the spot healing brush tool. So basically this is used to remove blemishes. Now this woman does not have any blemishes, but just to show you, I'm going to zoom in by pressing control plus a few times, and then I'm going to go up. And if we were to just rub over here, we can see it's removing her forehead wrinkles. And you can use this for any other blemishes. Photoshop is pretty smart with this stuff. Now, another way we can also adjust this image is by going into image and then adjustment, big surprise. And here we can see a bunch of other settings that we can also use to manipulate this image. So we're just going to change the vibrance a little bit and I'm going to make the image a bit more vibrant and then click okay. But obviously you can go through all of those settings and apply custom changes as well. And now finally, we're going to be adding some text. So to add text, all you have to do is go to the horizontal type tool over here. And then you're going to see the properties of the text come up at the top. So I'm just going to change the font color to white and I'm going to click on the canvas and it's going to create a new text layer. So we're just going to make this text at the very top, uh, right before the border. So I'm going to click over here. And then when I click on the actual canvas, it's going to create the text layer right above. And we're going to just make the font say coolest. Now you can also highlight the text over here and change the font, change the style of the font, change the size of the font, and then also change the alignment and the color. And what's really cool is you can also just change the color of certain letters as well if you highlight them before you change it. So we're just going to highlight this and make the font a little bit larger. We're going to make it 450 and we're going to click the check mark to make sure that it is completed. And then to move this text, we just have to go to the move tool and we're going to move it over here like so. And we're going to create a second line of text. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this layer. And we've already looked at these layer settings when we were rasterizing the layers, but now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the layer and we're going to click okay. And it's going to create another layer right on top so we can't see it yet. But if we go to the text tool and we click on it, we can actually see that only one of the text layers is selected. And I'm just going to change the text to setup. And then I'm going to press control A or command A on Mac to select all of it. And I'm going to just change the font to something different. Uh, and then I'm going to change the font size to maybe 400, maybe a little bit smaller, so 375. And I'm going to click on the check mark. And then I'm going to click on the move tool and I'm going to move it down. Now, when you're moving something, you can also press shift. And if you hold shift and drag it, it's going to only move the text on one axis. So we can see that right now it's still horizontally aligned like so. Now say we accidentally messed it up and we moved it like this and we still want the text aligned. It's very easy to align layers. All you have to do is make sure that you control click on the layer that you're aligning to. So I'm going to control click on coolest and then I'm going to make sure I have the layer I want to actually align, which is the setup layer selected. So right now I'm aligning setup to coolest. And then we just have to go to layer, align layers to selection. And in this case, horizontal centers. And we can see that setup is going to align to whatever is highlighted, which is coolest. And it's going to align horizontally. And then we can just press control D or command D to deselect that. And we're just going to move it back up a little bit. 
and our text is in place. And now it's time to add some effects to our text, which we're going to be doing with the blending options. So there's actually a lot of ways you can edit the current properties of the text. First of all, you can click on the text with the text tool and the properties show up up here. But you can also edit the properties over here. But we're going to be doing something called adding blending options, which is achieved by right clicking on a layer and then going to the blending options. And here you can make some final adjustments to your image. And there's a lot of different things you can do. So you can add a bevel and emboss. You can add a stroke, for example, but we're going to add a gradient overlay, which is basically just a color gradient on top of this image. And I just selected the black and white gradient. So you can click over here and it's going to open up the gradient settings and you can double click to change the colors of the gradient. But I'm just going to keep the black and white one. And because the opacity is set to only 16%, you don't see the full black to white, but rather it creates kind of a shining effect. And I'm actually just going to make this 12%. And another effect we're going to be adding is a drop shadow. So all you have to do is click on the drop shadow button. So as you can see the drop shadow, the blend mode is on multiply. It's slightly transparent and is going to be casting a shadow at a 90 degree angle at the following spread and size. And once I click on okay, it's going to apply these blending options. And you can actually see that this text looks a bit different from the setup text. Now we can add the same effects to the setup text by right clicking and going to blending options and doing it all over again. But this takes a lot of time and instead we can just use layer styles. So basically what we can do is right click on the coolest text, which already has the effects and go to copy layer style. And this is basically, you know, copying all of the stylings, which in this case include the gradient and the drop shadow. We can right click on setup and we can go to paste layer style and boom, the same effect is added to setup. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to also be slightly modifying this girl over here because we didn't do a perfect job of cutting her out. We're going to go to her layer and also go to the blending options. And then we're going to actually add a stroke and we're going to add a one pixel stroke that is in the center of her, so not inside or outside. And basically this gets rid of kind of the white line that was created from the poor uh, cutout and then we're going to click on OK. And as you can see, we're almost done our thumbnail. Now, the final tool that I think is really important that I did not go over is the brush tool. So we're just going to go ahead and hold down the brush tool and select the brush one. And we have to create a new layer for this. And the way the brush tool works is very simple. Depending on the color, you can add a brush to your you know, image. Now, the brush is going to be created off two properties, the size, of course, and the hardness. Basically 100% hardness is a straight line, whereas 0% hardness is more of a soft brush. So we're going to actually have a 0% hardness brush and we're going to make it approximately 700 pixels. We're actually going to make this a little bit bigger. We're going to say 750. We're going to click on the color over here and make it a lighter blue. And we're just going to add a brush effect to our thumbnail, which I think will make it look really nice. So all you have to do is click and it's going to apply the brush. We're going to click again over here, over here, maybe a slighter one over here and one over here. And we have this brush effect. Now it's a little bit too much right now. We're also going to lower the opacity by clicking on the opacity setting where the layers are. And we're just going to bring it down to maybe, maybe 22. And then we're just going to move this layer so that it's underneath the text and the image. So all we have to do is just drag this layer down and we have the brush effect added. And if I was to just click on this, you can see that it actually makes quite the difference. But there is our image. Our thumbnail is complete and hopefully you learn the core concepts. Now, all we have to do is save our image. So if you wanted to save an image as you were going along, you click on file and save, and it's going to save as a Photoshop, a PSD Photoshop file. And we have to just click on save and then click on okay. And you can also keep pressing control or command S to save as well. Now we're going to be finally saving this image as a PNG or basically, you know, exporting it so we can actually use this image. And to do that, all you have to do is go to file. We have to go to save as, and then we can choose the location and the file name and the type is going to be a PNG. And I'm going to click on save and we're going to make this a large file. And then we're going to click on okay. And it's going to save our image, which we can now open up anywhere else. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and you learned a thing or two. I know Photoshop is pretty complex, but I wanted to cover as much as I could in a short period of time. So hopefully you guys did enjoy that. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.